Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, we were uh, discussing constitutive analysis. So, continuing with that, uh, we have already discussed the phenomenological model okay? and uh, in that we have discussed the creep uh, as well as uh, high standard deformation. Okay? So, Johnson Cook model in that and uh, then uh, we were we have discussed for hot working Arrhenius type of sin hyperbolic uh, relationship between stress and strain rate. Okay? So, these are couple of models which uh, comes under phenomenological model okay? used extensively though they have empirical nature, but it is easy to kind of fit all the uh, all the parameters okay? and get some constitutive equation which can be used easily in, in any modeling work okay? or to predict stress at any other temperature and strain rate. Okay? So, we will now discuss this physical based model. Okay. Again, I am not discussing, again you can see if you go to any review paper there are uh, tens of models, okay. but I am just giving you a flavor of what type of modeling is done when you are uh, basing it on the physical phenomena. Okay. So, in this first is Z, this Z A model, okay, Zerili Armstrong model. Okay, and uh, this model is based on dislocation mechanism that how dislocation multiplication is taking place or dislocation recovery is taking place and so on. Okay. So, as you can see now that we are directly relating our constitutive equation with the actual deformation mechanism okay, which were, we were not doing earlier. So, this is based on uh, dislocation mechanism effect of a strain hardening, a strain rate hardening and thermal softening, uh, softening on the flow behavior is considered. So, from physics uh, physical uh, basis they have uh, included all these uh, three parameters. Okay. This particular equation you can uh, consider it for any high strain rate and relatively low temperature. Okay. High strain rate, low temperature kind of condition you can apply this particular model to develop constitutive equation. Okay. Now, what it does is that actually uh, the stress is calculated by considering two contribution to the stress. Okay. So, one contribution is a thermal contribution okay, and another contribution is a thermal contribution which does not depend on the temperature. Okay. So, by doing these two or combining these two different uh, uh, effect uh, of stress uh, effect uh, on the stress okay you are, you are able you are trying to find out the flow stress of the material okay uh, of course then you have to develop these uh, particular models and equations so you can see that the equation these two equations are shown here one for bcc material another one for fcc material and as we promised uh, in the first lecture of constitutive equation that you will have more uh, constants uh, when you are dealing with physical models. Okay. So, you can see here there are the model number of constants have increased. So, you have from C 0 to C 5 which earlier we had only 2, 3 okay. uh, and uh, on top of that you have this uh, exponents also. Okay. So, C 0, C 1, C 3, C 4, C 5 and some uh, exponent here. Similarly, in the FC for FCC material you have C0, C2, C3, C4 and so on. Okay. So, basically uh, again you can see that it is uh, bringing down the effect of uh, strain hardening okay, with a strain hardening exponent here, also the effect of strain rate, okay, effect of temperature okay, and that is how they are able to predict that what will be the uh, flow stress for a BCC material. Similarly, they have proposed another uh, equation for FCC materials 
where there is a slight change in the way they have uh, introduced the strain component it has a exponent instead of exponent n now it has a exponent of half that is 0.5 okay and it is already multiplied in the exponential term earlier it was as a separate term okay now it is a single term here with uh, with the temperature and strain rate okay so these are the two equations developed for two different uh, set of materials so c not uh, is basically the athermal term which adds the influence of solute and grain boundary to the thermal stress term okay so this is uh, our a thermal component which we were trying to see in the first equation okay so you have a thermal and thermal components now uh, of course as for any other model equation people have modified uh, this uh, zerelli armstrong model also so what this modified za equations uh, usually are trying to do is actually the strain hardening exponent if you see in the fcc material they have kept it as a constant 0.5 so half is written there so it is 0.5 okay so strain hardening exponent they are changing with some uh, variable n that means it can have different values instead of only a constant value 0.5 which is proposed by this za model uh, so this is to taken in into account uh, in a better way the dynamic recovery which is taking place during the deformation process okay so model model considering and, uh, the uh, the other model is that uh, which which consider dynamic recovery okay so it is concentrated more on the recovery part okay so basically what we are trying to do here is that the change in the dislocation density as a function of a strain okay is related with two terms here u minus omega rho u represent the strain hardening part okay and rho is the contribution through dynamic recovery okay so that is why it is in negative term as recovery will takes place the dislocation density will decrease so the rate of dislocation density increases as a function of strain it, this should have a negative influence on that okay now if you integrate above equation you get uh, the rho uh, terms in this form okay that uh, how the rho will change as a function of a strain okay so under a steady state the rho dynamic recovery okay that how what will be the uh, dislocation density is dependent only on these two term u and omega and the stress can be given by an equation like this okay uh, which is sigma square drv okay i will tell you all this that what do we mean by sigma drv and so on okay and uh, it has a exponent of 0.5 okay and there is a strain term in the exponential okay so by from physical based model you you can pr predict now that what will be the flow stress of the material if you know sigma drv and so on okay so th this is the model based on dynamic recovery now there are model which also consider dynamic recrystallization okay Uh, in this uh, what they are trying to do is they are trying to find out the friction recrystallized okay so to find out the friction recrystallized uh, they have some parameters here uh, so the equation is like this 1 minus exponential minus kd and alpha minus al uh, epsilon minus epsilon c upon epsilon p okay and epsilon is more than epsilon c so what is epsilon c it is a critical strain for recrystallization which we have already seen earlier if you remember that we were when we were discussing the dynamic recrystallization we discussed about this particular term okay so you this is your peak stress sigma p okay so obviously the strain corresponding to that will be epsilon p and the recrystallization will start at some point here okay and this we will call we called as epsilon c the critical strain to initiate recrystallization okay and obviously the stress associated with that is sigma c okay and uh, so basically the idea is that the strain should be more than the critical strain then only the recrystallization will happen okay and then only you will be able to calculate the friction recrystallized 
Okay, so some parameters are there K D and N D here which depends on the deformation condition. Okay, so, if you see actually the recrystallization process that how this equation has come, this equation has come from this kind of uh, Avrami equation okay, where uh, it has a typical S shape of curve. Okay. And this type of curve you will see in large number of processes, not only metallurgical processes, for example, growth in bacteria. Okay. So, if you have you are doing some culture of bacteria, okay, so there will be some incubation time, then the bacterial growth will increase suddenly okay, and it will increase exponentially and as the, uh, the, the volume of whatever system you have, okay, the uh, ingredients are getting exhausted, okay, then the population will again become saturated and it will start decreasing and become saturated. This kind of curve you will also see in the phase transformation that phase uh, there is a there is an incubation time before the new by the time which the nucleation takes place. Okay. Then there is a sudden uh, increase in the nucleation as well as growth. So, uh, fraction of uh, phase transformation uh, increases okay? uh, phase tra fraction transform increases and then as the amount of volume becoming smaller and smaller of the uh, parent phase. Okay? So, the again the kinetics decrease. Okay? So, you, it has a very typical this S shape curve. Okay? like this initially increasing exponentially and then decreasing. And this kind of behavior can be nicely shown with an equation like this 1 minus exponential minus k t to the power n. This bring out both this behavior very nicely and it gives you the friction either recrystallized or friction transformed if you are doing a phase transformation. So, you can see that it has very nice similarity with this uh, the equation is shown in the very similar way only the parameters which are used in exponential has to be different depending upon what is your process which you want to know. Okay. So, as you can see here friction recrystallize is shown in y on y axis, x axis has time. Okay. So, as you increase the temperature the recrystallization kinetics is increasing it is starting at lower time and finishing also at lower time and all the curves have the have this kind of S shape curve. So, they have found out the fraction recrystallize from the idea of the, this uh, Avrami type of equation. Okay. Then they also find out the same that how the fraction recrystallize can be uh, uh, can be derived or can be calculated from the flow stress curve. Okay. So, here we will see how it is done by flow stress curve. And here also you will be able to see that what we were discussing in physical based model that what do we mean by sigma drv. Okay. So, there are two curves shown here one is with a broad peak which you see for d dynamic recrystallization. Okay. So, stress increases then you get a hump okay. and then you have this dynamic recrystallization. If dynamic recrystallization is not taking place only dynamic recovery is taking place the curve will go something like this. Okay. And the difference between the two is given by some delta sigma. Okay. The initiation of recrystallization is happening at epsilon c and corresponding stress is sigma c, peak stress is at epsilon p and sigma p okay. and this sigma drv is you can say is saturated saturation stress and what you are getting after dynamic recrystallization you can say it is a steady state. Okay, so, from this also you can calculate the fraction recrystallize which is shown here. Okay. So, what they are saying is that whatever stress is, so if I uh, subtract sigma drv minus the stress at a particular point okay, and divided by sigma p minus sigma drx. So, this is actually the total drop in the stress because of the recrystallization. Okay. So, sigma p minus sigma drx is the drop because of the complete recrystallization in the material. Okay. Once it is recrystallized it drops to that from sigma p. Okay. So, that is you can say is a total recrystallization. Sigma drv minus sigma uh, whatever sigma you are at it to find out the fraction recrystallize. 
okay that delta sigma is the amount of recrystallization which has happened that is why the stress has come down from this uh, sigma drv level to delta sigma level okay and at this point it will be uh, the recrystallization will be complete okay so this uh, ratio of sigma drv minus sigma upon sigma p minus sigma drx should give me the that how much is the fraction recrystallized because by that amount the stress will come down okay again we are talking about uh, strain more than epsilon c so now you have fraction recrystallized from two different uh, ideas okay one from the stress strain curve one from the avrami type of kinetics and if you combine this together okay if you combine this together so both has giving you fractional recrystallized then you will get an equation like this sigma equal to sigma drv okay minus sigma p minus sigma drx okay this you are combining here and which is multiplied by 1 minus exponential minus kd the remaining term and so on okay so they found out the fraction recrystallize from two different ideas okay and then they equated it and from there they found out the what will be the stress uh, of the system at a particular point okay so this are this is a model uh, physical based model which is considering dynamic recrystallization now there are sometime uh, uh, as i told you artificial neural network based models also okay uh, so in ann based model okay the advantage is that you don't have to know the material behavior or actual deformation mechanism a priori okay you don't need that also i don't need to know that which model i should be using for this particular material okay so i don't have to postulate a model i don't have to determine the parameters of the equation because we are not talking about any equation here okay what we are doing is we are inputting for example in our case i am putting input of if it is a steady state condition uh, my strain will not come in picture so i am inputting the stress at different strain rate and temperature okay so strain rate and temperature is your input okay and the output is your flow stress so basically you, your ann model will be trained with the data which you have initially and what actually ann does in between is it it fits lot of polynomial equation to your data okay and from there it is it mini, try to minimize the uh, error okay so that it gets a, it gets a curve okay which can be used to predict the flow stress of for any other condition okay so if the strain rate and temperature will be used to get the flow stress and you can use ann model for doing that okay right now because uh, ann model is something which uh, because there is no physics involved we cannot discuss that in greater detail right now okay but if you are familiar with ann model and uh, all these ideas of machine learning and so on you should be able to collect lot of data maybe from literature if you don't want to do experiments yourself okay collect lot of data from uh, from uh, the published literature use that to train the model okay and then try to predict the flow stress for some other condition which you have not used to make the model okay then you will be able to say with confidence okay your model is working okay so with this uh, we have uh, kind of completed uh, uh, the constitutive models uh, based on phenomenological model physical based model and ann model okay we have used only few models to bring out the flavor of each of this category okay and also we have uh, tried to understand that why we want to develop constitutive equation okay the idea is to uh, uh, know the material behavior so that you can also design material accordingly and to all to to use this for doing any fem based modeling or so for your actual industrial process okay so once you know all the parameters all the constitutive equation parameter you will be able to do that okay So thank you for your attention